Savage Finance. Because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. What's going on? Today we're going to talk about fixing or rebuilding credit. Now, if you're rebuilding credit, you're going to have a different path than someone who is building credit, someone who's never had a credit card before. Totally different situation that you're going to be dealing with. But we're going to talk about rebuilding or building a credit profile. I have another video on here talking about how to develop super credit, but this video is for people who have really bad credit made some mistakes or had some unfortunate circumstances happen to them. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is go to the beginning of the channel and start watching the very first videos up to the videos today to get that economic financial literacy that you need to be successful in today's world. All right, so we're going to, the track's going to deviate a little bit because there are many of the things that you're going to do that are similar but you're going to deviate if you're a person who is rebuilding credit. Rebuilding credit is a totally different animal than establishing credit. So if you're establishing credit, you can go out and get two to three secured credit cards. And you don't want to get these pieces of trash secured credit cards that will never graduate and graduate means that when you give, they give you a secure credit card, you give them money up to a thousand, or if you're at Navy Federal, you can get a $50,000 secure credit card. And after your good payment history and you're handling the card responsibly, they will give you your money back and then the card becomes unsecured or graduates. It is a really murky market. So there are a lot of these credit cards that will start you off with a $300 credit limit and hit you over the head with $250 in fees. Stay away from them. Go to Capital One, uh, Discover, Secure Credit Card. If you have access to Navy Federal, that's gonna be your best bet because Navy Federal will probably graduate the card after good use after eight months. But you wanna do some research and I'll put some links and stuff down below to help you out. But if you're rebuilding, this is all you need to do is get two to three secured credit cards, handle them responsibly. This will establish your credit profile and you'll be good to go. And that's all you have to do. And also, this is why you want to get secured credit cards if you are establishing your credit that convert. Your credit score is compromised of how old your credit profile is. So if you go out and get a bunch of these little cheap, flimsy, crazy, no good, trashy credit cards, those will be your first credit cards and you'll be stuck with them for life and they never actually secure, they never unsecure, and they, naturally, they never graduate and you can't get big boy credit limits with these cards. So you'll just be stuck like with Chuck with these cards unless you go ahead and establish some better credit cards earlier. Just put that out there. So if you're rebuilding your credit, you got a whole different thing. Because let's say you had an unfortunate event where you were in the hospital, you were sick for a while, you couldn't work, and all of your credit became trash. Now, there is a certain way that you can challenge medical collection. I had a situation where I had to go to the hospital a long time ago and I had some medical collections. There's a certain technique for getting medical collections off and also restoring your credit. This is the thing that you're gonna to have to do. You're gonna to have to challenge the derogatory information on your credit cards and also establish new credit at the same time. And this is where the secure credit cards come in. Now, secure credit cards, once again, you've got a harder path to go than someone who is establishing credit because a SunTrust Bank has a secured credit card that graduates, but if you have bad credit, they will not approve you. Bank of America has a secured credit card product that graduates, but if you have bad credit, they will not approve you. So you, you're kind of like really in this bad situation because 
and challenge the derogatory information on your credit report. However, that's not going to raise your score. The only thing that's going to raise your score is getting new credit because let's say you have a bunch of the rocks and you get the rocks off then also you kill your credit profile age because once you get let's say you have a credit card that you were good you got sick and then you pay it and then you go ahead and you challenge it and you get this credit card off your credit file not only is that derogatory credit mark gone but so is the credit age which is really important to establishing high 700 to 800 credit scores. You're not going to get into an 800 credit score. I mean, the probably the fastest you can do it is 4 years, maybe 6, but typically you can get to a 700 credit score within a matter of months. But to get into the upper limits of credit worthiness is going to take some time. So, how does one challenge all of these derogatory items on your credit report. Well, first of all, I have a course. I'll link that below to help you out, but I will kind of give you some overall guidelines. One of the things is the first thing you need to do is get physical copies of your credit report. Everyone likes to do it online. When you challenge your credit online, you give up your rights. When you do to go to online and you do a, a, a challenge or a dispute, you give away rights. So what you want to do is to order physical copies of your credit report and then begin to dispute your challenges through the mail. I know people don't like to do that. It's not as fast, but once you go onto the credit bureau and you dispute your credit derogatories online, you enter into their rules and regulations and they can do what they want and their rules and regulations are not in your favor. The old school way, the snail mail way is the best way to do this. And what you want to do is to challenge these items using snail mail and using return. You want to make sure that you actually have recorded your challenge to this information because right now during this pandemic, it would probably be a good time to run a lot of credit challenges because a lot of people are not working. And by law, once you issue your challenge and once the credit bureau receives that challenge, they have to begin working on it and they have 30 days from the moment that they receive the challenge. It's not 30 days from the moment you issue the challenge because it takes a little time for the challenge to get to them in mail. But once they receive it, 30 days from the date that they receive it, they need to do an investigation. Now, here's where people run into problems. You've got to word your challenges correctly, because if you just like this item's wrong, if you don't put the right verbiage in there, they're going to just run what I call a garbage verification challenge. And this is how verification works. They're going to verify your address. And if the, your address comes back, that's linked up to the address that the credit card issuer had on file, it's going to come back valid and verified and they're not going to that's all they're going to do i mean they're never even going to contact the credit card issuer or the issuer of the credit they're not even going to talk to those people doing an online dispute is not in your best interest uh, many many years ago i had a situation where my ex-wife and i had some debts together and during the divorce she was supposed to pay him she didn't pay him and my credit got trashed. I mean, like 400 credit score. It was that bad. And I fixed my credit myself. I found this online forum and I turned it into a hobby. And it took me about eight months to get my credit from the 440, I believe is what it was, to a 738. About eight months. And I was working on this every day because the thing is, you have to word your challenges correctly because if you do not word your challenges correctly they will be ignored and you're not going to get the results that you want also as you're running your challenges you got to be set up for setbacks and delays because each time you run your challenge you're going to knock some stuff off and then some stuff's going to come back verified and this is where the 609 section of the law will help you because credit card companies will avoid a lot of your challenges if they're considered frivolous. 
And if you challenge the item two times and they've come back verified, they're going to say it's frivolous and they're going to ignore it. So this is why you want to start your credit challenges properly from the beginning to get ample mileage, to get the proper mileage, to get the proper results. I can tell you from coming from a 400 something credit score to now often to, I think it's 825. I, and it's been many, many years, you know, cause once again, once you get into credit purgatory, you can be there for seven to 10 years, depending on what you've done. And I'm here to tell you that you can legally challenge things that are true and get them off of your credit report. But it's all about how you do it. It's not about just the challenge. Cause like I said, many people who challenge their credit items, they do it incorrectly. They don't put the right verbiage on their challenge letters and they don't have, and they, they don't have patience because you're probably going to run. I probably during the eight months, I ran eight months of challenges each month. I would challenge something and I would readjust and I would challenge something. So every month I was challenging items on my credit report and every month I was getting things off and I was straightening up my credit. And a big thing that you want to do when you get your secured credit cards, and this is my advice to you, you want to get a secured credit card with maybe Capital One, USS Bank, Navy Federal. Uh, some of these credit unions have good secured credit products that will graduate to big boy limits. Now, why do you want to get to big boy limits? Because a lot of these uh, credit cards are junk and they're not going to get you to big boy limits and they're going to keep you in low credit limit purgatory for the duration of your credit profile. This is, you know, Wells Fargo used to have a really good product, but they no longer have this product, but you want to get a secure credit card that allows you to put the most because um, based upon my research, a lot of them only allow you to put 2,500 and where you want to be ideally, and you can do this with Navy federal credit, you can do five to $10,000. And I know that sounds like an amazing amount of money, but trust me, it's worth it. Now, if you do this with Navy federal credit and they will graduate you in eight months, they're going to return whatever money you gave them back. And also let's examine the behavior that got you bad credit. If you had a medical emergency, that's understandable. There was nothing you could do about that. But what if you did not have an medical emergency? What if you were just out there being irresponsible? You're going to have to straighten out those habits before you begin rebuilding your credit, because if you don't, the same things are going to happen again and you're going to get the similar results. So the first thing you need to do is have a budget, have a written budget on your bills. And I want you to be on top of paying your bills. I want you to be diligent about paying your bills and not just your credit card bills, because this is how a lot of people cheat. The bills that report to the credit bureau, they'll make sure they're paid and they'll let their electrical bill slide or they'll let their gas bill slide. Or they'll let... You want to get in the habit of paying all of your bills early. You want to create this habit because once you rebuild your credit, you don't want to go back to that situation. So you want to have an emergency fund, long-term emergency fund, a short-term emergency fund, because once you get your credit back on track, you don't want some little hiccup to put you right back to where you started. So on these emergency funds, your, your first, your long-term emergency fund should be six months to a year of living expenses and your short-term emergency fund should be around three months. So let's say you make $50,000 a year, your emergency fund at a minimum should be 25,000 plus an additional $5,000. So you should have $30,000 put away for emergencies. This will permit, you know, God forbid you have a medical emergency where you're out for a year or so, pretty much this is gonna cover most emergencies. And also you need to look at your money management behavior. Uh, right now, I have a video on here where you need to get a real checking account. There, there are many people who don't have real checking accounts. They're operating off of a debit card and 
you should settle and get all of your financial houses in order because later on, after you get your credit straight, after you get your, your, say, your, your emergency funds, two emergency funds funded, you're gonna to wanna to start investing. And you get into brokerage accounts, they're going to need to get money from your checking account for you to invest. And I don't want you doing the, 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 the debit card thing because that, that's just unbanked. And literally, if you are a United States veteran, you can get free checking from Chase. Just take your DD-214 in there and they'll open as many free checking accounts as you desire. I have business checking accounts with Chase. I have personal checking accounts with Chase. And I don't ever, now my checking accounts have money in them. So even if I was being charged, I wouldn't pay because I got enough money in there. But you want to go ahead and get your financial life together where you're operating with a real checking account and you need to clean up any bad behavior. Now also, to my dudes who are on, who are in the rears on child support, that's going to be a monster to deal with because once it reaches your credit report, it is not going to come off your credit report until you pay their arrears. That is probably, in my opinion, one of the worst things you can have on your credit report is being late on child support. And even during this pandemic, your stimulus check, if you were behind on child support, you didn't get your stimulus check and they will go for unemployment. So if you find yourself in that situation, I got a few tips for you. You need to go over to Hustlers Kung Fu, my other YouTube channel, start watching all the videos and develop yourself a side hustle in addition to keeping your job and get that handled because it will hunt you for life. It will mess up many opportunities. You can lose your license. There, there's just, it, it's just a bad way to go. So what you wanna do is to go ahead and get your stuff together. And this is pretty much the, the process. It's not rocket science hard, but you have to be consistent, you have to be diligent, and you have to do it in sequence. So for those of you who need help, one again, I went ahead and lowered the price of the credit repair course, and I've got it. I'll link that below so you can go ahead and get that. But essentially, having good credit is important in America. You wanna have cash, but you also wanna have good credit because good credit comes into play with you getting a job, good credit comes into play with your insurance rates, good credit comes in play with background checks. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you're in a serious situation where you can take advantage of each and every opportunity. The challenging stuff about being diligent, because if you are a person who has no discipline, you're a person who can't follow sequence and can't follow protocols and procedures, this will probably be a nightmare for you. So I suggest that you figure out a way to put yourself on track where you can actually sit down and do this because literally it took me eight months of challenges to clean up my credit. I was doing this for eight months. It became like a hobby. It, every day I would come home, I would read for about two to three hours on how to improve my credit and I just went at it really, really hard. And that's why I got the results that I wanted to. So you can do this yourself, but it's gonna take time, it's gonna take the right information, and it's gonna take a certain level of diligent, dil being diligent and being on top of it. If you catch the credit bureau slipping, because this is about something about knowing the law, that they can remove it. Like I had things on my credit report that were true and I got them removed. Knowledge is power. Knowledge will take you to a whole different category on this. All right, so hopefully this will help you out. And also, before I go, you should be working on making more money. Typically, the reason that most people fall into credit card or bad credit situations is A, they don't make enough money, or B, they had some type of tragic life-altering event. And A <laughs> happens more often than B, where they just don't have enough money, they're struggling, they're using credit cards as an extension of lifestyle. And this is something else, going back to making more money. 
You should not be using your credit as an extension of lifestyle. You should be using your credit as the way, as a resource. Like I use my Chase Visa the most and I use it like a debit card. I've, I haven't carried, I've had that card eight years, I believe, and I've never had a balance on it. I'll use it, I'll pay it off weekly. And this keeps me out of trouble. Well, not, it keeps me out of a bad way. It keeps me out of paying interest. I've never paid a lick of interest. And due to the fact that it's rewards credit card, when I was using it for my business, I did not pay for air travel for three years because of that card. And I'm getting ready to start using it heavily again in my business. And I'm going to, you know, once we start traveling again, once the pandemic's over, I'm going to have those same benefits again. Because one of the things is that credit, good credit can enable you to get things for free that you normally would do. I was normally going to spend the money and I get this additional benefit for doing something that I was already going to do. That's one of the reasons you got to have good credit so you can get up to the reward credit cards. You know, Chase Sapphire, American Express. This is where you want to be. And also, you want to be really intentional about your money. This is another way that people get in trouble with credit because they're sloppy and they don't manage their finances. And it's just a train wreck. And also, stating this, if you have delinquent student loans, they're getting harder and harder to get off your credit report. I will tell you some of the stuff I got off my credit report. I got a repossession off my credit report. I got student loans off my credit report. I got a tax lien off of my credit report. It's just a matter of being diligent and having the right information. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this puts you on the right track. And the links to everything that I talked about will be under the video. So with that, I'll see you guys in this next video that should be right here.